like to thank Dr. N. N. Khanna for this case, without whose guidance this wouldn't have been possible. And he's a senior consultant, interventional cardiologist at Apollo Hospital. So uh, this is the story of a 45-year-old gentleman on CAPD who was on CAPD since last four years due to multiple failed vascular accesses. And he was being worked up for renal transplant at a different center. He presented to us with pain abdomen, hypotension, and encephalopathy. Further evaluation revealed that he had fungal peritonitis, and this catheter has to be removed, and so hemodialysis was forced upon us. Next slide, please. Um, we could access the right femoral vein, but on the left side, the femoral vein was thrombose, and even on ultrasound on Doppler, the vein couldn't be visualized. So clinically also, the patient had features of central venous stenosis. He had significant swelling on bilateral upper limbs, had collaterals on the anterior chest wall, as well as the anterior abdominal wall. Since the patient was for renal transplant, so we decided to go ahead with the angio straight away. Next. This is the angio of the right femoral vein, which was patent, but we wanted to leave this vein alone, since this would be required in future for transplantation. So through the right femoral vein, we pushed up the catheter up to the heart, and we were taking the angio shots next. So here we could see that the upper part of the superior vena cava was completely obliterated and there, there wasn't any flow of contrast upward. So we pushed the catheter a bit upwards and we could see that the right internal jugular vein also wasn't very good. There was only uh, very feeble contrast flow there. And even towards the left side, the left brachiocephalic vein couldn't be visualized. <clears throat> so as we pushed the catheter up a little bit more, and as the contrast was instilled, we, we could see that the right internal, internal jugular vein is all collateralized and there was absolutely no flow upwards. So we tried to visualize the left brachiocephalic vein and uh, when the sheath was pushed slightly towards the left side, again we could see that there was very poor flow of contrast as we can see over here. Very poor flow of contrast even on the left side. Next please. So both these findings were confirmed by injecting contrast through, uh, through an IV cannula in the upper limbs. On the left side also we can see, let it go on. We can see there is complete obliteration of the left subclavian vein and it's all collateralized flow which is happening. The left subclavian vein is flowing back through collaterals. Next please. And similarly on the right side also, the right subclavian vein is completely obliterated and the, all the flow is through collaterals. So it's all collaterals which are flowing on the anterior chest wall through which the subclavians are flowing. Next, please. <clears throat> so we even tried to pass the guide wire through the right subclavian, through the, uh, we tried to cross the guide wire through the right subclavian vein. We can see some contrast flowing in that direction. But since the stenosis was quite stiff and complete, it was total complete occlusion, the guide wire couldn't be crossed. Next slide. But fortunately for us, what happened, we could access the left internal jugular vein and we could push in a guide wire through there. And initially we thought as uh, contrast was pushed in, we thought that we are into the left internal jugular and we should be able to access the vein now. Next slide, please. But definitely the angiogram was slightly different, not as it is expected when we are instilling starts into the left internal jugular vein. Next, please. So we knew we are in a difficult situation and most likely this was a collateral which we had access. So when the contrast was instilled, we could see that it's going all down through the abdomen and it's coming up and returning through some collateral only. It's going all down and this was confirmed by further scans and by different lateral views also. Next slide, please. So this is a lateral view where we could see that this vein is actually outside the heart and it is going down and it's coming back again. Um, but then what we realized was this collateral was quite big and there were few draining tributaries from this collateral. And so, so we thought that why not try to put in a perm cath in this access only, in this collateral, big collateral only. So we put in the dilator. This collateral had a very uh, sharp angulation anteriorly, as we can see right over the end of the guide wire. There is right over here where the dilator is there. There is a very stiff angulation anteriorly. Next, please. But still we could, no, previous one. But still we could manage the sheath into the guide wire, next. And this is what the final position was, which actually wasn't very good. There were two kings upwards and even the tip of the catheter, as there was an angulation there, 
So it wasn't allowing any flow. So what we did simply was we pulled the catheter, next slide please. We pulled the catheter slightly backwards and even the tip was fine now and there weren't any kinks also. And we could get adequate flows in this catheter. So this is a permacath which was finely placed and this is the final position on X-ray and we could get good flows through this permacath. Next slide please. So this permacath was placed in a collateral vein and this patient received hemodialysis for three months before getting a renal transplant. We reviewed literature and found few cases where abdominal collaterals have been used as vascular access. To summarize, this was a desperate measure, but definitely not a recommendation. Thank you.